Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today, we're joined by two very special guests, Drew King and Cameron Engelhart. They're fisheries biologists with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, and in this video, they're actually conducting a red count survey. Cameron's gonna introduce you to the techniques that they're doing and what exactly they're looking for. So yeah, um, we're here conducting a red survey. Uh, we're gingerly walking across the Spring Creek. Uh, myself and Drew, uh, we're uh, scouring the bottom looking for these reds. Uh, the small depressions in the stream, they're noticeable as they, uh, they're, uh, the gravel is a lot cleaner than the surrounding area around it. Um, what we'll do then is once we find one, we'll uh, mark it on our, uh, a sheet that we can later use to uh, get population estimates and, and understand the overall health of the stream. What, what are some of the tools that you currently have right now that are going to assist you with finding these reds? So yeah, one of the, the biggest thing are polarized sunglasses. They take the glare off the water, where it allows you to uh, see the bottom of the stream a lot better. Uh, we also have waders on. It's, it's the middle of November. It's extremely cold. I think it's about 35 degrees right now. So we got the uh, uh, waders and, and long johns on underneath. Uh, and uh, like I said, we got our clipboard here to to, uh, to uh, take notes and whatever else may need to be done. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, so here uh, you can see a red or the start of a red that was formed by a trout. Uh, you can see the kind of depression here. You can see the darker uh, area on either side of it. Um, the, uh, the gravel is roughly uh, a dime size and shape up to about a half dollar, which is ideal. It's in the, a riffle section here that uh, brings a lot of dissolved oxygen down through. Uh, keeps those uh, eggs nice, healthy, and clean. And uh, hopefully, in uh, a few months, we'll have uh, have some little little guys swimming around. Yeah, so here we have uh, two more great examples of, uh, of a trout red, uh, distinguishable once again by the lightness of the red. Um, like I said, roughly basketball in size and shapes. So the the reason that we can see that it's light like that is because that's where the female has actually taken her tail and cleaned out all of that more fine substrate. Yep, correct. So she'll come in uh, once she finds a suitable location uh, to lay her eggs. Uh, she'll come in, kind of roll on her side, kind of wiggle, and that allows the tail to kind of articulate that uh, gets enough energy and disturbance to allow those spine sediment to uh, you know float downstream and clean away, uh, exposing nice gravel from where those eggs can kind of settle in between the crevices there. Awesome, thanks Cameron. Okay, so we, uh, we just conducted and uh, finished our survey here on Spring Creek. Uh, we walked roughly uh, about, not quite a half a mile here. We found uh, 23 reds. Uh, varying size and shape, uh, distributed fairly evenly uh, throughout the reach. Uh, ideally, mostly located in those prime habitats for spawning, which are ripple, uh, you know, less than roughly two feet deep. Uh, we'll now go back and uh, kind of hand this uh, data off to some of our other fisheries biologists, where they can use it to uh, uh, understand how healthy the stream system is, uh, understand the distribution estimates and population estimates and uh, use that uh, data to uh, help uh, manage uh, the fisheries here.